Hi, kids. Okay. Um, I am going to do a short little movie about the nucleus and nuclear decay and fundamental particles and stuff like that. So the first thing I should mention is that um, the word atom means indivisible. Okay. That uh, back in the time of the Greeks, when the Greeks were so you know, amazing and doing everything. Not that they're not amazing now, um, but when they were leading the world and everything, um, that the word atom meant indivisible because the philosophers and the scientists, because philosopher and scientists were kind of the same thing back then, um, believed that the smallest particle you could have was an atom. And that's really what a fundamental or an ele elementary particle is. It's a particle that you can't split apart. And obviously we know now that you can split apart an atom, but, you know, it's it already had its name and inertia goes and there you have it. So anyway, so um, an atom, that's why, that's why it was called an atom, but obviously you can split apart an atom. An atom is made up of an electron and the nucleus, which is neutrons and protons. Well, electrons are fundamental particles because you can't split apart electrons neutrons and protons are not. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but this is going to represent my nucleus. Okay, so let's pretend that the white golf balls represent, okay, my neutrons. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. And then my red golf balls represent the, the protons. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I have six of each. So this would be a carbon-12 atom. So like this would represent this, okay? Where this is here's what it's saying that there are twelve, there are twelve uh, nucleons. So this is how many neutrons and protons there are, and then this is the atomic number, which is six, because there's six protons. Okay, so this would represent a carbon twelve atom. Um, but a couple of things that you should know and understand. Okay, is that uh, number one, what actually holds the atom together? In this case, it's the glue. But this glue is actually called the strong nuclear force. Okay, so if I have two protons right here, do they want to hang out next to each other? No, of course not. They do not want to hang out next to each other. In fact, if I had two protons sitting like this, they would push each other apart really, really hard. But what happens is, with nucleons, that if they touch one another like this, they get attracted by the strong nuclear force. And the strong nuclear force is much stronger than the electrostatic force. So that you can imagine, guys, if I had, okay, a nucleus that only had protons in it, well, what's going to happen is that repulsive electrostatic force is going to overwhelm the strong nuclear force, and it's going to push it apart. And here's what I mean. So do you see how, like, the, these two protons that I'm touching, they would only repel each other. They would not attract, okay, because they're not touching with each other because there's no there would be no strong nuclear force. But there would be an electrostatic force between them, where if you look, like, do you see how these neutrons are there to help keep your your elect, your nucleus stable? So really what keeps your nucleus stable is all of these neutrons in there, and that's why as you get bigger and bigger, your nucleus needs to have more neutrons in it um, in order to remain stable, which is why, like, you know, carbon-12, because it has the same number, but when you get up to something like iron, there's going to be way more neutrons than protons, okay? Um, the other thing I want to mention is you might think, well, geez, protons came about because, again, the word proton kind of means indivisible, too, um, and guess what? Protons and, ne and neutrons, you can divide. Um, you can divide them into what are called quarks, okay? Originally, it was supposed to be like quarks, but I don't know. They like this. They like this word better, so they called it quarks because it's kind of quirky. 
But uh, a neutron, if you remember, a neutron has no charge. Well, a neutron you can think of as a dud. That means it's made up of two down quarks and an up quark. There are different types of quarks. For this class, we pretty much just need to know down and up, where a proton is made up of two up quarks and a down quark. So a neutron is easy to remember because it's a dud. Well, a down quark has a charge of negative one-third, and I'm going to say, like, the elemental charge, okay? So if you look here, this would be negative one-third plus, and I should tell you, an up quark is positive two-thirds of the elementary charge, plus two-thirds minus one-third. Well, guess what? You get no charge, hence a neutron is a dud. A proton you get plus two-thirds minus one-third plus two-thirds, which you get plus one, hence a proton has a charge of plus one. All right, that's at least an introduction to this. Hopefully that uh, is enough to get you started. Now you can go ahead and get started on that cheat. Bye, kids!